in the previous video we saw how to implement our profile page and then add items to our wish list on the profile page now in this part we'll be working on our icon and the splash screen for the application so this is the splash screen that we want to create in this episode we want it to mimic the look of the home page and also we design a very simple icon here and then apply it to our app now the goal of what we are going to do here is to end up with image files which are similar in size to the ones provided by Espo over here. So we need an icon which is of equal size as this provided icon and also another one which is a transparent background which is also of the same size as the icon. According to the Espo documentation, the size of this icon here is 1024 by 1024 pixels. Now Espo is very kind enough to give us a template to speed up this process for us. So over here on Google, if you search for Espo app icon and splash, you can get a Figma document which is titled Espo app and icon. You can go ahead to open this in Figma which will require you to log in. Once you log in, the app will prepare and open the project for you. In the project, we see that we have the three images that we will need. That is the icon itself, the adaptive icon for Android and also the splash screen. And at the bottom here, we have a preview of what they will look like on actual devices. Starting with our icon, it will be a very simple one. Our icon only has a text in it which is saying wind up like so. Then it has the background color that we are using mainly in our app. So over here, we can select the canvas like so and add a text. Now in this text, we'll have wine up. We can ensure that the text is selected and at the right here, we can increase the size. And also for the font, we'll change it to Mukta. Mukta Mahi. And then we we'll ensure that the text is bold. Now for our text here, we want to bring the app to the second line. So I'll put my cursor in between it bring the app to the second line. Now with this, I'll select the text and then reduce the line height over here. I think about 76 would be okay. Then I need to position this to be in the middle. Now the concept of this concentric circles is that our icon can be as big as the bigger circle. So the icon for it to look nicely on the device has to be within the last circle that is the last but one circle and the last one. So meaning we can still increase the size of our text. So over here, I'll select the text once again, all of it, and then change the size from 247 to 350. Once we have it like so, we can then position it to be in the middle of the circle nicely like so. Now we need to set our background color. And for the color, we'll get it from our project. So back in our code editor, under the config file and in the theme file, we have our accent color. So we can copy this color here. And then back in our browser, we can use this here. So while we've selected the icon like so, we can go to the fill and then paste our color. With this done, we can change the color of our text here. We can select it all and change the color to white. So that will be at the fill here. we we'll change this to FFF. Then once we've done that, we can hide the circle and then the squares. To do this, under the icon over here, we hide it by checking the eye next to the BG circles and also hide the lines as well. Now once you do this, you have the look of the icon that we are going after. So down here, we can see the preview on the mobile screen here and it looks like what you are targeting. Now the next thing you want to do is the adaptive app icon. Now this will be used mainly for the Android devices. So for this, we can copy and paste the text of our icon here. So we can select the text, copy, then paste it over here. Now this is white, so we are unable to see it properly. So temporarily we can change the text color to black. And then for this as well, you need to position the icon to fit in the bigger circle. 
So this is where we can reduce the size to 247 pixels. But first of all, we have to ensure that the text is selected. Once you have it like so, you can position it to be in the circle nicely like so. Now for the adaptive icon, it is supposed to have a transparent background. So we need to change our text here back to white. Make sure to select it and then change the fill back to white. And then under the adaptive icon, we hide the whole background. But we can see that the text is still here, even though we can't see it, it is still there. Now lastly, we want to work on the splash screen. Now for the splash screen, we wanted it to be very similar to the home page of our application. So what we can do is I will take a screenshot and bring it here. And then we traced over a few of the components on the screen. So over here in this directory, I have the screenshots of the application. And then for the home screen, we can drag the image from the file directory and then put it here. Directly on the splash screen. Now once we have it here, we can drag it to fill the entire splash screen. And we can be sure that it has covered the entire splash screen if you look at the previews down here. Now what we'll be doing here is that we'll be using the tools available here to trace the circles over the content of the home page. So first of all, we'll select this and then use the rectangle tool over here. And we'll draw a rectangle over the text at the top, like so. Now for the colors that we'll be tracing over, we want it to be the same as our secondary color. So back in our project once again, we'll set this to our secondary color. So with the fill over here, we can paste the secondary color, like so. It's quite faint, but it is still there. Now for this as well, we want the corners to be rounded a bit. So we can select it once again and set the border radius here to about 70. This should make it a bit rounded. Now we can copy and paste this and use the same for the text here. That's the header. And then copy and paste it once again. And do the same for the popular section. For the other items as well, we copy and paste it once again. And then we enlarge it to fill the content. And then we copy and paste this big one. And also drag it over to the side like so. At the bottom as well, we copy and paste this again. Then we adjust the size to be close enough to it. Copy and paste it, drag it to this one, and then copy and paste once again for the last one other side. Now I can select all the three here by holding shift, copy and paste it, and then drag it to the bottom. Now this header still remains, so we copy the one for the header and paste it again and then drag it onto this content. Now to see what is happening here properly, we can hide the screenshot over here. Also with the original image that came with the splash, we can select it and then hide it over here. Now that's the look of what we have now. Now let's select all of the items and get them to be in line. So I'm holding shift while pressing on each of the items at the left side. With this done, we can align them to the left by using the command here. And we can see from the preview that they are in line. However, we need to get them a bit away from the side of the device. So we can push them in a bit using the right arrow. Then if we look down here, it's almost there. Let's go a bit. And then it looks okay. Now for the header text here, we just need it to be centered. So we can select just that one and then center it over here. Now looking down at our preview, we see that some of the rectangles here are missing. And that is because if you look at the left side over here, 
Some of the rectangles are outside the scope of the splash. So we can select all of them here and drag them to be under the splash, like so. And now we can see all our rectangles. Now the one at the top right here needs a bit of space. So we can select it and then drag it to the right a bit. And this one is to come in a bit. Then the same for this one. We can ensure that they are all in line by selecting the two of them and aligning them to the left, like so. And then the same for this guy, we can align it to the left. Now with this done, we have the look that we are going for. This is how the splash will look on a dark background. And this is how to look on a lighter background. Remember, the splash is also having a transparent background, just like the adaptive icon. Now, once we are comfortable with how the icons look, we can go ahead to export it. So we select the three of the icons here, holding the shift key. And then come down here to export, and then we export all the three layers. Now this will be downloaded into a zip file. And then you can go ahead to extract it. Once you extract it, you get your splash, the icon, and the adaptive icon. Now you need to copy all these three files back into your project. So back in the project, you can select all these three files and drag them to the assets directory. Now it is telling us that the files will be replaced, which is fine. The same for all the others. Now with this done, we go to our app.json. Over here, for the Android aspect, the foreground is the adaptive image. That is the one that we created in the Figma project. Now we need to set a background color. And this should be the same as our icon background. So for this, inside the theme file, we copy our accent color once again. And then back in the app.json, we set the background color for the Android icon. Now for the splash screen as well, we said that one is also transparent. So we need a background color. The default is white, but we can set it to our primary color. So we copy our primary color and set that as the background color of the splash. With this done, we can reload our app and see whether the icons are working now. So I bring back my contest menu and then reload the app. Instantly, we see that the splash screen is not working because we are still seeing our old splash screen. Also, opening the contest menu, we see that the icon is still the old icon. Now, if this happens on your device as well, one way you can fix it is by renaming the image files. So back in our assets directory, we rename the files. All we'll do is to add one to the end of each of them. So rename the icon as well by adding one to it, then the splash as well by adding one to the end. Then back in our app.json, wherever the images are referenced, we'll update the name as well. So under the icon key, we'll change the icon name to icon1. Do the same for the splash, then the same for the adaptive icon, like so. Now once we do this, we can reload our app again. And instantly we see that our new splash screen has been displayed. And then once we are in the app, if you visit the contest menu again, we see that we have our icon over here, looking just like we have it in our target image over here, like so. Now to make sure that the splash screen covers the full screen for devices other than the one you took the screenshot with, over here in the splash, you can change the resize mode to cover. So this will ensure that even when you are working with a device with a smaller screen, the splash screen will cover the screen entirely. So we've been able to create and set the splash screen and the icon for our app. That is all we wanted to do in this part. So I'll put a link to what we've done today in the description so you can check it out. And I'll see you in the next one.